By the autumn of 1379, the Republic of Venice was fighting for its very life as enemies converged on the city from every direction. This is the story of the War of Chiagia, in which Venice was pushed to the brink of complete ruin, yet somehow snatched victory from the jaws of defeat, and eventually would go on to dominate the Mediterranean. During the High Middle Ages, the Italian maritime republics of Venice and Genoa were in fierce competition with each other for control of trade routes from the Eastern Mediterranean to Central Europe. These cities were arguably mirrors of each other, located on opposite coasts of Italy, yet on the same approximate latitude. Venice, the serene, faced the Adriatic, while Genoa, the superb, looked to the Tyrrhenian Sea. By the late 14th century, numerous wars had already been fought between the two rival city-states, but the most intense confrontation yet was still to come. The initial spark for conflict occurred on the island of Cyprus in 1372. During the coronation of the young king Peter II, a quarrel broke out between Venetian and Genoese representatives over who would hold the new king's reigns. Supposedly, Genoese dignitaries began throwing food at the Venetians, and this food fight turned violent when some of the Genoese brought disguised swords with them. After this, the local population later attacked and ransacked the Genoese quarters. In response, a Genoese fleet descended on Cyprus. Tensions between the two city-states were ratcheted up. Meanwhile, Venice and Genoa disputed the small but strategic Aegean island of Tenedos. Positioned at the entrance to the Bosphorus, it could effectively control access to the Black Sea. The island was officially a province of the Eastern Roman, or Byzantine Empire, but the empire had effectively been reduced to a rump state, surrounded by enemies, which now consisted only of Constantinople and the immediately adjacent areas. Indeed, the Venetians and Genoese both actively interfered in Constantinople's politics, backing rival claimants to the imperial throne. The Venetians demanded that Emperor John hand over Tenedos, and with a hostile fleet at his doorstep, he had little option but to comply. In response, the furious Genoese deposed the emperor and placed his son on the throne. They dispatched a fleet to seize Tenedos, but when the island was attacked, the local Greek population sided with the Venetians, and the Genoese were repulsed. In the spring of 1378, the Serene Republic of Venice declared war on Genoa. Both cities courted allies to maximize their own advantages. Joining Genoa was Francesco de Carrara, lord of the city of Padua, and King Louis of Hungary, who both desired to see Venice's power reduced. Venice was not completely alone. The support from King Peter of Cyprus was mostly symbolic. The alliance with Duke Bernabo Visconti of Milan posed a severe threat to Genoa itself. The Venetians were quick to take to the offensive. An armada, under the redoubtable Carlo Zeno, was dispatched to the eastern Mediterranean to wreak havoc on Genoese shipping. Meanwhile, a fleet commanded by the veteran captain Vetter Pisani raided towards Genoa and routed a Genoese fleet near Anzio. At the same time, Milanese troops ravaged the Ligurian Republic's hinterland. These reverses sent shockwaves reverberating through Genoa, and the city erupted into turmoil as it was imagined that enemies would soon be at their gate. Despite his initial success, Pisani was not strong enough to attack Genoa directly, and instead started prowling the Mediterranean to raid Genoese commercial interests. Meanwhile, the Genoese and their allies were able to take the war directly to Venice. Hungarian and Paduan soldiers blockaded the city by land, and a fleet under Admiral Doria set sail to challenge Venetian sea power. In the middle of attacking Hungarian bases along the Adriatic coast, Pisani gathered his fleet and attempted to block Doria, but was outmaneuvered, and the Genoese ships successfully entered the Adriatic. The Venetians and Genoese then entered into a game of cat and mouse, with neither side able to land a decisive blow. As winter arrived, Pisani's fleet anchored at Pola, but the cold wreaked havoc on Venetian ranks. At the same time, the noose tightened on Venice, as Genoa's allies laid siege to the mainland stronghold of Treviso. At sea, the situation was a little better. Even as spring came, 
the Venetian fleet had difficulties coming to grips with the Genoese. At Pola, the Genoese arrived outside the harbour. Pisani refused to engage them, knowing he had a strong defensive position and that Zeno's fleet was still far away. Pisani was urged into action by his captains, and even accused of cowardice. Eventually, he sallied out to do battle. At first, Doria fell back in retreat, urging the Venetians forward, and it seemed that victory was at hand. Then, the Genoese turned around, and a previously hidden squadron emerged from behind Pisani's ships. It was a complete disaster. The Venetian fleet was effectively destroyed in battle, and only a handful of vessels under Pisani managed to escape. Tainting the Genoese victory was the death of Admiral Luciano Doria, struck dead through the throat, but this did little to change the fact that the Venetians had suffered a massive blow. As a result of this humiliation, Pisani was arrested and brought back in chains to Venice, where he was imprisoned. This did little to improve the morale of the populace, as many of the common people still viewed him as a hero. The city now braced for the coming assault. The harbor was fortified, mercenaries were hired, and diplomatic overtures were even sent to the King of Hungary, but his demands were too steep. Venice was besieged by both land and sea, as the Genoese fleet, now commanded by another member of the Doria clan, Piotro, effectively blockaded the lagoon by sea, while the Paduans and Hungarians controlled the mainland. Doria focused his attack on the island city of Chiagia, as its capture would give him access to the lagoon, provide his fleet with a base to attack Venice directly, and link up with Genoa's allies on land. The Venetians heavily fortified the area, and resisted stoutly, but the Genoese steadily advanced, bringing up siege engines to bombard the defenses. It was a furious struggle, which saw great acts of bravery on either side, but eventually, though suffering great losses in the process, the numerically superior Genoese were able to force their way across the bridge to the island. Chiagia, often known as Little Venice, fell to the invaders. With it, thousands of its defenders were killed or captured. The Genoese flag of St. George was hoisted above Chiagia, while Francesco da Carrara entered the city in triumph. Panic took hold over Venice, and in desperation, Doge Andrea Contarini sent emissaries to negotiate a peace. But Doria refused, vowing that he would have no peace until he had bridled the horses of St. Mark. The Genoese would not be content until they had brought their long-standing rival to its knees. Though there was great distress, the people of Venice pulled together and readied themselves for what would now be a fight to the finish. Under popular demand, Pisani was freed and reinstated, greeted with cheers by the common people. As a show of patriotism, when the crowd chanted, Long live Pisani, he responded with, Long live Saint Mark, the patron saint of Venice. The situation was desperate. Venice was completely surrounded as the inexorable advance of her enemies closed in from all sides. Food and supplies were scarce, yet despite seemingly being in the edge of victory, perhaps Doria had made a mistake. By not attacking immediately, he had given the Venetians a tiny breathing space. More Genoese attacks came on the outlying cities, and though beaten back, the Genoese were still dangerously close to Venice itself. Like a cornered beast, the Venetians were driven to fight back with any methods available. More galleys were dispatched to recall the badly needed Zeno, yet the Republic's defenders could not simply wait for his return. Something needed to be done quickly. As winter approached, a plan was hatched. In a desperate move that bordered on absurdity, the Venetian fleet would attempt to blockade the entrances to the lagoon themselves, which connected to Chiagia. If it succeeded, this action would actually trap the invading Genoese inside. Though perhaps it's seemingly foolhardy, the Venetians understood the ins and outs of their lagoon in a way that no foreigner could. If certain key channels could be controlled, the Genoese could be cut off, and the besiegers would find themselves besieged. A fleet accompanied by the aging Doge Contarini set out under the cover of darkness to launch their counterattack. As the enemy spotted them, a fierce battle erupted. 
Phoenician soldiers who landed on the shore were detected and routed. Some killed outright, others driven into the sea and drowned or captured. But on the water, two cogs were sunk offshore, blocking the channel. Soon, more rock-filled hulks were positioned, sealing off this entrance into the lagoon. Within a short period of time, though the outcome was still in question, the tables had seemingly been turned, and it was now the Genoese who were besieged inside the Venetian lagoon. The Genoese finally realized what was happening and tried to stop the Venetians by removing. Damn it. Within a short period of time, though the outcome was still in question, the tables had been turned, and it was now the Genoese who were besieged inside the lagoon. The Genoese finally realized what was happening and tried to stop the Venetians by removing the obstacles, leading to more desperate fighting. The Venetians had been successful so far, but both sides were exhausted and it was unclear who would break first. A fleet of ships was spotted heading towards Venice, with the Venetians and Genoese watching in anticipation of approaching reinforcements. Then, the lion banner of St. Mark was spotted. It was Carlo Zeno, having returned from his commerce raiding mission. With this, the tide of the war shifted definitively in favor of Venice. The Genoese redoubled their efforts to break out, in the fighting, Admiral Zeno was badly wounded, but survived, and despite heavy losses, the Venetians held the blockade. Another shift of fortune soon occurred, when a shot from a primitive Venetian cannon smashed into a building, and falling debris killed the Genoese admiral, Pior Tridoria. The Venetians followed their success with an attack on the bridgehead to Chiagia. The Genoese were routed, suffering heavy losses, and were forced to retreat in disarray. Their garrison on Chiagia continued to hold on, but things were getting even more desperate. Realizing that victory was being snatched away from them, Genoa sent a relief fleet from their home city, but it was slow in arriving. The Genoese reinforcements finally reached Venice, but even with some initial successes, were unable to break through to the trapped garrison. Starving, and at the end of the rope, after one last desperate attempt to bribe mercenaries in Venetian service, the beleaguered Genoese surrendered. The war was not completely over yet, as Vetter Pisani died while continuing to fight in the Adriatic Sea, but the Republic had emerged victorious, though perhaps just barely. Conflict between the two punch-drunk city-states finally came to an end when a peace treaty was negotiated by Count Amadeus of Savoy at Turin in 1381, three years after the initial start of the war. Immediately afterwards, it was unclear what the consequences of the war truly were. In the short term, it was essentially a defensive victory for the Venetians, though a miraculous one at that, as the Republic was left exhausted and depleted. However, in the long term, Venice was the winner. Despite the losses, the city of Venice survived with its institutions largely intact, while Genoa fell into internal chaos and eventually became a vassal to the Kingdom of France. Venice, in comparison, would continue to ascend, dominating Mediterranean trade, and starting in the 15th century, would begin carving out an empire in mainland Italy itself.